character you've had to close the book on. Yeah. Uh, what is the what is that like? Is there a, a, a detachment that has to occur, either emotionally or intellectually? Yeah, I'm sure there is. I guess I've gotten better at it because you know certainly you keep telling yourself it's a job and. Frankly, I was incredibly lucky both times to have been able to do this for a long time. So I was nothing but grateful. There was no point at which I thought, you know, oh, I can't believe it. We don't get to do, you know. We, we were <laughs> thrilled every time we found out we'd get to make another season. So uh, you walk away, you have no choice. It's the nature of the business I'm in, which is so unusual, but, um, but it's, it's the nature of the beast, as mm -hmm. they say. Do you feel like you, there's, a part of this character or of previous characters that have wormed their way into your hearts and you have to you have to sort of say I'm not that person anymore I'm not I don't have to deal with those issues I don't have to deal with going into a fake ER every day for six months or however long it is <laughs> that you film no um, <laughs> I know I, I really uh, because I've been doing this a while I really am able to separate my work life and my home life. Even though I do play these characters for many hours a day, many days a week for a bunch of months, mm -hmm. um, I think there was a time where I thought the mark of a good actress is someone who took it home with them and kind of got caught up in it and kind of confused real life with the job and all that. And then I grew up and realized that <laughs> that just makes for a horrible home life. Right. So uh, no, I, I really am, um, you know, when it's time to leave, I'm pretty good about realizing you know, that I'll, when I put the scrubs on tomorrow, I'm her again, but for the mm -hmm. time being, I've got, you know, my kids and my life at home, which is completely different and separate, so. Right. There was long before this current wave of television a feeling in TV that um, you, you couldn't have an overly unlikable female character that, right. um, or protagonist, that, that viewers just wouldn't respond to it. They wouldn't grant that person the same leeway that they did male characters for whatever reason. Um, I don't know if that was something that you felt beforehand, if you ever thought, why are the characters I'm reading for not more complicated, not mm. darker, not more complex? No. <laughs> <laughs> I basically went like this, no. So I, mean, I just knew that it wasn't, it didn't move me. It didn't mm -hmm. reflect what I knew to be my experience in the world. And that may be just another way of saying the same thing, I don't know. Right. That, um, and also, I, I, I'm not often able to tell if a character is likable or not. Can I find the internal life of this person for a period of time? Can I try to understand why she does the way, the things that she does? Or is there anything about her that I either understand or can come to care about? I tend to believe if I, as the actress, am able to find that, that the audience will come along. I, I certainly hope. I don't believe there's a single you know, without getting controversial, that there are not really a lot of completely unworthy humans in the world. I think we all start out with a kernel of something good and all kinds of awful stuff happens. So if I can find that thing in the character and it's something I want to explore, you know, from an from a outside perspective, it may come across as a bad person or whatever, but, you know, I think underneath it, there's somebody who wants to be good, who tried at one time, got beaten mm -hmm. down, whatever their story is, you know. Um, so I didn't, it didn't occur to me that she'd be likable or unlikable. I thought, oh, let's find out what her, what her journey is like. It seemed compelling to me. You've spoken about this before, but um, were you hesitant? Was it difficult as a, as a sober person to take on the role of someone who every episode is doing things that are antithetical to the life of an of right. operating sober person? It was not at all hard for me. It was like a gift in a way. I mean, I, I didn't... I didn't know. I was also never a pill person, mm. so it wasn't, it wasn't like being near the thing that I struggled with. But um, the addictive personality is, you know, it's far reaching. And um, I think, like, I know a lot of people who will say, like, oh, he has everything going for him. Why, how could he continue to drink? He was just about to get that promotion or whatever it was to have absolutely no understanding of the nature of the addictive mind. And you can tell right away that that's not something they have. And I think the fact that I completely understand that made it that much easier for me to portray her with a level of um, reality, at least from my vantage point. And every day to know that all I had to do was take off those scrubs, put on my real clothes, and go back to my life, 
and I didn't have that struggle anymore. Mm -hmm. And to wake up the next morning in time to go to work and, you know, just gratitude, just filled my life on every level with gratitude for the fact that I'm not there anymore and there are so many people that are that just can't get out of it. I'd like to transition to talk um, about The Sopranos. Sure. We're in New York, next to New Jersey. <laughs> Everyone in the world has seen that show. The um, show was a, a phenomenon in, in the way that most shows are not. Critically, fan-wise, um, what, what was it, at the, at the height of, of Sopranos fever, was it, did it ever feel uh, too much? Did it ever feel smothering to, to film this show that everyone, seemingly everyone in America was talking about at the time? I Winning all these awards, just it was the show. I stayed pretty far away from all that stuff. Like, I've never been one to read reviews or to, I, I am completely not a social media person, uh, even before it existed. Like, I didn't read what was being said about it. It's only as, ta as I get further away from it that it's almost like, you know, when it, you see the astronaut getting further from the Earth and it's big and then it gets like smaller. It's like, that's, I'm kind of realizing now what this thing was. Because mm. at the time, I was really just a regular working Joe a little bit, and, and I couldn't have had a more perfect partner in Jim, mm -hmm. in every way, uh, Gandolfini, who had the same feelings about it. Like we each, we'd have you know, a year off one time, a hiatus, and then we'd right. get back to do it again. He'd look at me like, I, I don't know what we did, but I guess we've got to do it again. You know, it's like, <laughs> that, was, that was how we started the season. He was not an actor's actor in that way. You know what I mean? Like he mm -hmm. just, you know, the two of us were like, you know, just two suburban kids, and, and you fell into this thing. And, uh, you know, if you, if you let yourself get caught up in it, you can really, you know, you can really, you could, it's not hard to lose yourself. What, what happens with people in this industry does not uh, condone, um, you know, mental health, really. So, um, you know, you really got to keep your wits about you. Right. That's what I'm saying. It was a job and a great job. So I bring this up because this week, as happens seemingly every few months, uh, David Chase was forced to, not forced, but he talked yet again. This week? Yes, about the ending of the show. He wrote a breakdown for the Directors Guild of America website where he explained each shot of the sequence of, that fi of the final five minutes when they're in the diner as, as an attempt to tell people what happened. And th this debate still rages. Did Tony die? Did Tony not die? Um, but he is seemingly never going to satisfy people. Uh, in this way. Do people ever ask you about that ending? Oh, yeah. It really is one of the great internet TV debates. Uh -huh. The guy in the members only jacket, that he come out of the back? Right, of right, right, right. Gosh, I know that there are all kinds of ideas about what people think about it. But yeah, people, you know, out of nowhere come up to me, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> Apropos of nothing. I've ne but I always know what they're talking about. Um, so, um, as if I'd written it. But, uh, uh, you know, and people have said, okay, I understand, and I said, but what actually did happen? I said, I'm like, it no nothing, we stopped shooting, nothing actually happened after that. But um, I thought it's true, there is no way that everybody's gonna be happy, and I, I was so smart. I mean, I, I was, it's one of the things I loved about David Chase and all of them, is that they just, I, they had their finger on the pulse of something much, much larger than I was able to understand. And I was so happy to just do my little job, you know, mm -hmm. and to know that people were responding the way they were to the show. And so I thought, it was, I thought it was fantastic that, you know, he explained it once, although I'm sure I'm paraphrasing probably incorrectly, but just that uh, we had, um, we were privy to Tony and Carmela's life for that period of time. And right when, it, when the camera stopped, we weren't anymore. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Who knows what happened, but we're not allowed to find out. You know, we're not allowed to know past this point. It's like you'll be our last question. Ooh, okay, it's a fun one. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Are you a fan of brunch? Am I what? A fan of brunch, like a combination of breakfast and lunch. <laughs> <laughs> right now? Just like, are you a fan, like in general? No. Good is that question. really a question? That's a great question. No, brunch usually means like getting together with a lot of people and going yeah, to like a, a place Sunday and having morning. margaritas and... I don't do any of that stuff. I don't, I don't drink margaritas. Um, I'm usually with my kids at that time. It's one of the few times we can be together. And um, I don't really like restaurants. But thank you, though. Yeah, I just needed to know. So thanks. What, what, what was your name? Sarah. Sarah. That was well, a great question, Well, you had the last though. question. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank no you. Problem.